Hey guys and welcome back to part 2 of the series of creating an advanced key system in Unreal Engine 4. This is going to be the second and final part as it's just going to be a quick two part series but in today's episode what we're going to be doing is creating the keycard blueprint as well as the widget which is put on screen showing us which keycard we have as well as then linking the keycard to the door so that we can then open the doors if we have the correct keycards. So like I say this is going to be the final part where we're going to be finalizing it and finishing everything off. So I hope you enjoy and I hope this works great for you. So if I go back to the keycard folder that I have and what I'm going to do is right click, create a blueprint class, create an actor. And I'm going to call this one keycard BP like that and open it up straight away. What I'm going to do in here is the same thing I did in the door. I'm going to get a static mesh, static mesh like that. And this static mesh I'm going to set to be my keycard one, which Asmund has made, which again you can download in the description down below. And then I'm going to add another box collision as well. This is so that we can pick it up and just scale this up to the correct size for you so that it then fits this perfectly. So when the player walks into this, it will pick it up like so. Compile and go to the event graph like this and delete these three nodes here. Again, we're going to select the box collision, right click, add event, add on component begin overlap like so. Other actor is again our character. So for me, that's the third person character like that. And as third person character, Again, we're going to get the key cards like so. So get key cards like that. Out of this, all we're going to do is we're going to come out of that and insert. So we call that insert function there. Plug that into the cast like so with the array there. And we're going to tick this box here. So we're inserting a true value into this. And once again, we're going to right click on this integer here and promote to variable. And we're going to call this one key card value once again. And then tick the I here. So you can change this by just selecting it so each key card is different. And this just saves us from having to create lots of different blueprints. We can just do it in one. So we compile and save that. And now what this is going to do is when you pick up this key card, it's going to set it so it's true. Out of this, I'm going to create a widget. So create widget like so. And this is going to be the one to tell the player that they've picked one up. So I'm going to create that now. So if I minimize this, right click, user interface, widget blueprint. And I'm going to call this one key card pick up like that, open it up straight away. Again, doesn't matter what you called it. This one is going to be some text, but I'm going to make it dynamic. So if we drag and drop this in here, and again, size to content, I'm just going to set the text in this one to be, you've picked up a dot 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 key card, and I'm just going to select all that and hit control C to copy it. If I hit enter like that and move this to where I want. The only reason I'm writing this in here is so I have a good reference to where it's going to be and what it's going to look like. So again, if I anchor that down here, and just move it around to be where I want it to be. So I think that's gonna be quite good. So I compile that. And what I'm gonna do is next to the text here, if I hit bind and create binding, I'm gonna set it so that dot 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 will be the color of the key card that we pick up. So we can do this very simply. We can just move the return node over there, come out of the return value there, and we're just going to format text like so. In here, I'm gonna hit control V to paste that. So you picked up a dot 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 key card. Where I put dot dot dot, what I'm going to do instead is do this open parentheses there and then write color and then close parentheses again like that. And it's the special kind of one by holding shift and hitting square brackets on your keyboard. And now you can see what this is going to do is it's going to write you picked up a and then input a text value there with the variable name of color and then say key card like so. So what we're going to do is create a new variable here. So hit plus variable. I'm going to call this one color. Set this to be a text. So text like that. Compile make it instance editable like so, drag and drop, and just put that into there like so. So what this is gonna do is you picked up a, it's gonna read the text off of this variable here, put that in, and then put keycard. So we compile, save, and close that. Go back to the keycard blueprint here. I'm gonna put that in here, so it's gonna create that widget like so. And then I'm gonna come up with the return value of this, and I'm going to set color. So I'm gonna set that color variable there, so it knows which color it is we are picking up. Plug that in there like so. I'm going to right click that, promote to variable, and I'm going to call this one keycard color. Again, instance editable, so click the I, and this is allowing you to change this for each different keycard as well. So compile that, and now that is going to be working like that. And what we also need to do is out of the return value, we're going to add to viewport so the player can actually see this. Plug that in there. Then after this, what we're going to do is we're going to get a destroy component. So destroy component of the box collision there. We're also going to do the box collision as well as the static mesh. So it's going to remove those two things there so the player can no longer see them. Then we're going to hold on D, left click and get a delay. I want this to be a delay of three seconds. So this widget is on screen for three seconds. Then I'm going to come out with the return value again. I'm going to remove from parent like so. 
And then straight after that, I'm going to just destroy actor with reference to self. So it's going to destroy this whole blueprint here like so. And so now this is the key card pickup working. So when we walk into it, it's going to set the current key card value to true. So we do have it. And then it's going to tell the player using a widget that we have that key card color. We can compile, save, and close that like so. So we can compile, save that, and then go to the construction script to do the same thing we did in the door blueprint. So you can change this to be whatever color you'd like. So what I'm going to do is get a static mesh here, drag and drop it in, set static mesh. So again, you can change this to be whatever you mesh you like. So each key card could be a different mesh. Right click new mesh, promote to variable, and I'm going to call this one key card mesh like so. Then out of the static mesh again, what I'm going to do is once again the same thing we did last time, create dynamic material instance, plug that in there. Element index this time is going to be one as we have two materials on this static mesh. So if you select it, we see we have two materials here. We want to affect element one. If you don't have two materials, don't do that. But obviously do this if you do, or if you have more than one, change it to the correct one for you. What I'm gonna do is then actually just use this material here. So if we open it up, we don't need to create a new one. We just open up PBR like so. And I already have this color parameter here, but you probably don't. So again, what you're gonna do is just get a vector parameter like that, name it color and plug it into the base color like that and set the default value to whatever you want. So I'm going to set that to black like so. So apply, save, and close that. And then once again, right click it to make it a material instance. But I'll show you that in a minute. So minimize, right click that, create material instance, which you have there. And then go back into the keycard blueprint and put this source material here. Or we're going to right click, promote to variable, call this one keycard material like so. Compile to change the default value and put this material in here. So PBR instance like so. And like I say, this means you can change it for each individual key card. Return value of this, we're going to set vector parameter value so we can change the color of it. And then right click on value, promote to variable, call this one color, make it an instance and have it there. And now we can change the color for each individual key card. Then again, final step is to just set material. So drag out the static mesh, set material, plug that in there like so with the material as a return value there. Element index, making sure again it is one like that. Compile, save, now you can close the key card blueprint as that's all we need to do there. And then the final thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create the widget so that we can see which key card we have on screen. So to do that, I'm gonna minimize this. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna right click, user interface, widget blueprint, and I'm gonna call this one key cards widget like so. Name this whatever you like, and then open it up straight away. Down here, I'm just gonna drag and drop, getting an image, anchor it to the bottom left as that's where I want it. I'm gonna set the size X and size Y to both be 100 like so, as that's the size of the image I'm using. Then what I'm gonna do is under brush, I'm just gonna hit bind, create binding like so, so we can change the image depending on which key card we have. So to do that, we need to do a bit more code in here. So I'm gonna move the return node out over here to give it some space and actually down a bit as well. And then I'm gonna hold S, left click and get a sequence like so to put it in there plug that into the get brush at zero like that. Hold down O, left click, get a do once there. Plug that to then zero of the sequence. Out of completed, we're going to cast to our character. So for me, that's third person character, object being get player character, like so. As third person character, we just want to right click, promote to variable, and call this one character reference, and do that like so. So now we're gonna be creating a character reference so we can use it later on and we don't want to reset this as we only want to do this once. And then we're gonna hold on B, left click and get a branch and plug that to then zero of the sequence there. True is gonna go into this return node down here and the condition of this branch here is gonna be if we have key card zero or our first key card. So what I'm gonna do is drag and drop the character reference in here. So get character ref, come out of this and we're going to get the key cards array here. Come out of this and we're going to get a copy like that. Index being zero, plug that into the condition there. So what this is going to do is essentially if we have keycard zero, it's going to set this image to be zero like so. So to do that, we're going to right click the return value of the return node, promote to variable, and I'm going to call this one red keycard as I want the red keycard to be element zero. So make sure that these are all the same. So if you have keycard value zero is red, put that in here. If you have it as green, make sure this is green. So we compile that, change the image in the bottom left down here to be our red keycard here which again are linked in the description down below. And then we're just gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna select the return value here, copy and paste it three more times. So we have four return nodes in total. Hold down B, left click another two times. So we have three branches in total and just plug the false into each branch. So false of that branch goes into the second one, false of the second goes into the third. And true of the second goes into the second return node, 
true of the third goes into the third return node, false of the third goes into the fourth return node. And then we're just gonna get a copy again. So get a copy out of this like so, and then get a copy again like that, with this one being one and this one being two. So you just go up accordingly like so to see which key card you have. And then obviously we want to set these accordingly as well. So right click, promote a variable. This one I want to be blue key card. So I'll do that, compile and set this one to be my blue key card. And then right click, promote a variable. And this one is gonna be my green key card. So green key card like so. Then this bottom one, I'm gonna right click, promote a variable again. And this one is just gonna be empty. So if we don't have a key card like that, and let me just make sure I set this to be green as well. The green key card, and then this bottom one, I'm just gonna leave the image as empty, open the tint, and set the alpha, so the A, all the way down to zero, so it is see-through. And now this should be that working as well. So what it's gonna do is we're just gonna see which key card we have and set the correct image according to that. So we can compile, save, and close that. And then back in the third person character blueprint, what I'm gonna do is get event, begin, play, come out of this, and we're just going to create widget, with this one being this widget we just made. So key cards widget, I'm gonna to add to viewport just so that we have this widget on screen at all times as well. Compile, save, and we can close these as now all we need to do is put our doors in and set the key cards according to them as well. So as you see, I already have this door in here. So I'll just get a key card blueprint in here too. So key card BP like that. And we also set the default key card mesh, which I didn't do. So open it up, key card mesh, set this to be key card like so compile and save that. Then you can see we have that in there. Now this is quite big, so what I'm gonna do is just scale this down a bit, like so, get it to how big you want it to be. As you can see, this is black and this is red. So I've already set this door to be red. If I select the key card, set the color, I can just set this to be red as well. Although that didn't work, so let's see why. If I open up the key card blueprint again, it's because we didn't set the parameter name there. So I need to make sure that that is set to color. If we compile, save, this should now work. So there you go we change the color like so. So I want it to be red like that. The key card value of this is gonna be zero. Key card color is gonna be red. So I just type red in there. Make sure the door has the exact same key card value. So that is also zero like so. If I go into the next room, I'm gonna drag in another key card, scale this down a bit again. I'll make it 0.5 like so. You can just change the value in the blueprint as well if you want, so you don't need to do that every time. So just open it up, select the static mesh and change the scale there. But I'm not gonna to bother too much with that now. Key card value for this, I want to be one, and I want this to be blue. So set it to one, type blue in there, and then I'm just gonna set the color to be blue as well. Obviously you don't need to do blue here if you don't want, just make sure that it's all set accordingly and correctly for you. Then we just drag in the door again. So for me, that's door BP, door like that. I'm just gonna copy this scale and paste it there, and then just move this to where I want it to be. And then make sure that you set the key card value of this to be one as well, and change the color to be blue so it's the same as the key card. So they now match as well, they're both of a value of one. And then finally, I'll do the last door. So make sure I'm just gonna scale this up and move it to where I want it as well. And then I'm gonna set the key card value of this one to be two. And I'm gonna set this color to be green like that. And then I'll get the key card again. So grab the key card like so. Again, I'm just gonna scale this down a bit. And then set the key card value of this to be two. The color to be green and then I'll set the actual color to be green as well, like that. And obviously you can hide these key cards any way you want. This is just basically how it works. So now if we hit play to test this, if we walk into this door, it says you need to find the correct key card first. If we wait a minute, that should go off our screen. And if we do it again, you need to find the correct key card. If we walk into this, we pick it up. It says you picked up a red key card. We walk into this, it's now gonna open like that. That works perfectly. Walk into this one, you need to find the correct key card first. We walk here, you picked up a blue key card. You can see it in the bottom left hand corner of our screen. Walk into this door and it's gonna open perfectly like that. And then if we walk into this, it will say again, you need to find the correct key card first. We walk into here, you picked up a green key card and then we can open this door perfectly like that. So that works perfectly. So I think I'll be it for this video is we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've created a kind of advanced key card system so we can walk into a door. It tells us we need to find the correct key card first. We can walk into a key card. It says you've picked up a red key card, as this one is red. You can walk into this door and we can then open it like so. We can walk here again. We need to find the correct key card. We walk into this one. You've picked up a blue key card. And now we can open this door as we have the correct blue key card. And then once again, that will say the same thing. You picked up a green key card. And then this says 
we can now open this door. And obviously that would have said you need to find the credit key card first, but we saw that before. So that works great. And again, obviously you can change the color and value of these doors and key cards by just simply selecting them here, meaning we don't need to create multiple blueprints for each one. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.